Thank you so much uh, for the introduction um, and uh, thank you, Adrien, for taking most of the points that I had written down. So I can, I can copy paste right now. Um, it's really an honor to, to join you today and, and kick off this discussion and continue the discussion uh, we've been starting last year uh, when it comes to transnational violent uh, right-wing extremism and terrorism. As uh, Hans-Jakob Schindler mentioned, um, we commissioned uh, the study uh, uh, that is sort of the basis uh, of some of the discussions uh, that we're having today on Friday and which actually forms part of a longer process and deliberations within the Federal Foreign Office, which we started at the beginning of last year. Um, because we did not only uh, witness uh, a rapid rise in, in violent right-wing extremism on a national level, which is of course a grave concern uh, for our colleagues from the Interior Ministry, but we also saw a growing uh, transnational connectivity between actors and groups on the far right. And when we commissioned the study in March of last year, it was important for us to somehow demonstrate that the phenomenon cannot only be viewed uh, locally, but that the connections of right-wing extremist networks have long since reached an international uh, dimension. And at the same time, uh, and I want to emphasize this point, and Adrian also mentioned that, of course, the fight against Islamist uh, terrorism is not losing its importance. And the recent terrorist attacks in France, Austria, and Germany have shown us that we must not let up in our common fight there. However, and again, copying from Adrien, it's precisely the experiences gained in the fight against Islamist terrorism that could inspire us to take comparable countermeasures against terrorism of the white-wing spectrum. And maybe that is an interesting uh, difference here in the national cases, um, because um, in, maybe in, in, in contrast to other countries, our experiences started uh, because of our national history in fighting right-wing uh, uh, terrorism, then we transposed that experience to fighting Islamist terrorism, and now we're reverting sort of that experience and adapting it to the new uh, uh, um, uh, trends that uh, Adrien has described and which the study shows. Um, but that is in general why our involvement as a foreign office in the area of violent right-wing extremism and right-wing terrorism currently aims to raise the profile, create the awareness uh, that was mentioned and, and the, the, the know-how at the international level. We were able to introduce the topic for the first time uh, as part of last year's council conclusions on EU uh, external action on preventing and countering terrorism and violent extremism. And in order to better jointly address this topic uh, with our partners, we continue to raise the topic during our EU presidency in the relevant working groups and as well as part of our agenda as non-permanent member of the UN Security Council. And of course, uh, even though those two uh, uh, opportunities ended uh, at the end of December, we will continue to do so in the different fora uh, in this year. Mm, if we look at recent events in Germany, it's uh, um, extremely worrying. I mean, Adrien mentioned the, the, the main attacks that we suffered uh, on the right when it comes to uh, Hanau and Halle. Um, but it's also worrying, uh, and, and you will have seen that in the media, when elite soldiers establish right-wing extremist networks in their units, when police officers uh, base their professional actions on their own political and extremist convictions. And it's worrying when right-wing extremists try to dominate or take over demonstrations against the government's anti-corona measures, uh, which is the example that we had uh, when uh, a mixture of the uh, conspiracy theorists um, and right-wing uh, uh, tried to enter the Reichstag last year, which fortunately did not end up as the, the event in, in Washington, but still the images uh, of those people on the steps of the Reichstag were, were really worrying and concerning, uh, especially uh, uh, against the backdrop of our history. And it's also worrying when we see illegal transactions involving weapons and explosives conducted virtually or in the real world trying to bypass border controls. Germany has reacted on the national level uh, to this growing right wing uh, extremism both uh, with legislature, but also on the political level. 
Um, the federal government has set up a, a cabinet committee to combat right-wing extremism and racism of March, in March last year. We expect uh, to launch a com comprehensive catalog of measures in the coming weeks, months, with specific projects uh, aiming at improving information gathering and sharing, prevention and exit work in the area of right-wing extremism. We've also seen really a high number of bans of extremist, extremist associations on the right wing. Um, since the beginning actually of, of last year, the Federal Ministry of the Interior has banned several associations in rapid succession. And in, the, in addition, numerous arrests and house search, searches uh, were being made, uh, which has left uh, quite the impact in the scene uh, as, we, as we see. In addition, uh, uh, we've tightened uh, the Weapons Act and also are uh, uh, in the works of uh, establishing stronger online restrictions when it comes to hate crimes and uh, distributing images, advertising for terrorism. Um, and on the governmental level, in order to strengthen uh, our cross ministerial efforts, um, the Joint Center for the Defense Against Extremism and Terrorism, right, uh, with additional uh, personnel, gave the security authorities a position where they can, can better act and react to what is happening. Um, this was the national perspective, but as mentioned before, the right-wing extremist scene is very well connected across state borders. The members are mobile, trips abroad to participate in what, what you mentioned uh, um, uh, in the beginning, the, the rallies, the marches, the festivals, mixed martial arts events, but also training activities have become integral part of the international right wing and their propaganda. But we still not, do not know enough about the structures, some of the motivations and actions of individuals or groups. And that's why the CEP study is so important for our work. Uh, we are really thankful for the effort and, and the, the recommendations that came out of it because it touches on some of the major transnational aspects. And I want to pick out three, which I find of extreme importance. The first one is financing, second one is training, and the third one is the online recruitment and radicalization. You can add all the, the different uh, uh, rallies and marches as subsequent and, and subsettings of these, of these issues. For us now in the foreign office, uh, as a next step, it will be important to acquire broad and systemic knowledge uh, of the transnational networks. And with a mid to long-term aim to develop joint action. For instance, the Financial Action Task Force, the FATF, has started to look into the right-wing topic with their specific expertise in countering terrorist financing and anti-money laundering. And when it comes to national listings or association bans, we have to look into the possibility of listing such groups on the far right uh, or actors on for, for instance, uh, the EU terror list. But again, this is long-term. We are still very much at a starting point. We need to share information on groups and activities. We need to develop joint understanding. And, and maybe there's a, a, a here a difference between me, me and Adriel. We also need joint definitions and categories. It doesn't have to be a, a, a purely theoretic debate, but in many cases, we still see that different categories are being used, different statistics uh, are being uh, uh, produced uh, from country to country, and it makes uh, sort of a joint uh, picture of the situation and its development more difficult. And we need to exchange best practices when it comes to law enforcement prevention and de-radicalization. Because despite the differences in national case studies, there are similarities and connections, which we can only tackle with joint cross-border initiatives, with whole of government approaches and with whole of society measures. And that's why we are very thankful for today's uh, exchange with such a variety of experts and act actors in their respective fields. So this is uh, my contribution at the start. Thank you very much for your attention. Looking forward to the discussion. Thank you.